little bit about Matt. So Matt's our most senior research analyst here at CB Insights. He's been published, you know, all over in, in the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, the Financial Times, you name it. He's He's been in there. He's been cited. And uh, he also leads our sort of insurance technology insights research. Um, so he drives that, which is a separate newsletter for us and um, is one of our quickest growing channels as well. And uh, Matt, prior to sort of CB Insights, came out of Northwestern University. So throughout this webinar, we'd like to sort of try to move quickly, but also maintain some level of interaction. Um, so you can tweet at us at CB Insights or using the hashtag CBI chain, and we'll do our best to either push those questions to Matt at the end of the webinar or answer them directly if we can. You can also ask questions directly in GoToWebinar via the questions tab that you should see on the nav bar there. Just a little bit about CB Insights. So we're a, a big data machine learning platform and analytics tool that tracks all of the private companies in the world, so financing and exit data. Um, who's investing in what, what trends are big, et cetera. And a lot of the data and facts that we'll be sharing with you today come straight out of our platform. And so there's a lot of tools there if you're interested. Um, you know, just drop us a line and we'd be happy to show them to you. Uh, and just, you know, for reference, we work with some of the, the biggest customers in the world, and that includes um, some of the logos that you see on this slide here. So with that, I'm going to end sort of the housekeeping part of the the show and turn it over to Matt. Thanks, Victor. Um, so as Victor mentioned, uh, we're sort of the mantra we go by here at CB Insights, um, you'll see on the screen here is, in God we trust, all others must bring data. So here we're going to try to take a really sort of a data-driven view into the investment landscape uh, within sort of the blockchain and Bitcoin universe. Um, just up front, you know, I just want to mention that we probably will not be going into a lot in terms of the deep sort of regulatory complexities um, or sort of underlying technologies here, but we will try to give sort of a broader high level of landscape view of what's going on in the blockchain landscape, where are startups emerging, where start where startup formation happening, where sort of the investments going in the space. Um, so hopefully you get part of that uh, through this webinar. So here just a quick look at what we'll be covering today. One just sort of a quick look at sort of the overall fintech universe. Um, then we'll see where sort of Bitcoin and blockchain stands within fintech. We'll take a quick look at sort of where the, the roles of corporates have been, um, where are financial services and tech giants placing their blockchain bets. We'll take a quick case study look at Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan. And lastly, we'll look at a lot of where sort of the new sort of startup formation is happening within uh, blockchain. So let's get started here with sort of the fintech uh, landscape. If you see here, you know, no surprise, you know, fintech's been a hot and crowded space. In 2015, we saw sort of a new watermark for, for, for funding um, and deal activity in the fintech space. Uh, specifically, we saw $13.8 billion invested across over 650 deals in fintech. Um, so obviously, you know, the capital is definitely pouring into the space. When we take a look at sort of the quarterly view here, you know, it's, it's a bit more nuanced. We see, um, you see that, downturn in Q4, uh, the drop to 1.7 billion in funding uh, across sort of a, a drop in deals there. So that was in line with sort of the broader um, drop, broader fall we saw sort of in, in the venture ecosystem in terms of deals and dollars dropping in Q4. Uh, so FinTech was no exception there. And we saw, despite sort of the spate of mega rounds in Q2 and Q3, including uh, for example, SoFi in Q3 raising a, a, over a billion dollars, uh, we didn't see that sort of bear out in Q4. Uh, um, so definitely keeping our eyes peeled uh, as, as this quarter comes to a close this year. When we look at sort of the ex exit side of things, uh, you know, FinTech exits have been accelerating on the M&A side, but mostly on sort of the smaller uh, strategic M&A. We haven't seen sort of an influx of, of large exits despite, um, despite sort of the, the influx of capital. So Square, probably the most notable FinTech exit at the end of 2015 uh, there. And then some of the sort of, you see the lending club and on deck, the marketplace lenders who went public uh, back in 2014. Um, one reason why sort of the fintech sort of hasn't borne out on the sort of the exit landscape is sort of the public performance of um, some of these earlier fintech darlings. So here you see uh, Lending Club, On Deck, and Square uh, compared to the sort of the S&P 500 since their IPOs, all of which um, have been underperforming uh, since they've gone public. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll look at a lot of sort of different companies, uh, partnerships, as well as investment trends in this uh, webinar and one of the tools we'll use to do that is this business social graph tool so letting you sort of visualize 
the investment acquisition competitors and partners um, in, in fintech and blockchain. So we'll be using this tool a lot uh, throughout the webinar. Sort of one application of that up front here is sort of just the um, increase of fintech investors over time. So here you see, it's a little bit hard to see, but those green dots sort of representing uh, investment relationships. So over 200 investors in fintech in 2010. Now, flash forward to 2016, you see over 900. Uh, so clearly sort of the influx of investors from, from angels to venture firms to a, a lot of the strategics which will get involved, which we'll talk about a little later in the webinar, um, has, has really sort of happened in this last five years. When we think about some of those sort of non-financial services corporations who are investing, um, the unusual suspects, if you will, uh, some names definitely come to mind. Uh, Google, through its venture arm GV, has been actually one of the most active investors in fintech overall. Um, investing in companies like OnDeck, uh, Robinhood, Digit, and others. Intel and Salesforce. Salesforce just recently made an investment in insurance tech startup, Finance, Fox, in Germany. Um, and this isn't just sort of uh, limited to the U.S. We also see this happening um, in Asia, where we're seeing a lot of sort of corporates in Asia investing in um, fintech startups stateside. So Renren, for example, the Chinese social network has been very active in investing in U.S. fintech startups like SoFi, Motif. Uh, Cindio, uh, one name that's sort of not represented here, Rakuten just started a, a fintech fund uh, to invest in, in fintech upstart. So you see here, and then SoftBank obviously doing sort of the bulk of that large SoFi round back in Q3. Um, so not limited just to sort of US uh, unusual specs, suspects, is also happening sort of globally. And then of course there are the banks who are now sort of actively investing in, in the fintech landscape. Um, so here you see sort of Citigroup through its venture arms, City Ventures has been very active. Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan, we'll dive into a little later, have been also very active on this front. But here you see some of the names and, and sort of the increase of sort of investments over time into fintech startups globally. Um, you know, through sort of the influx of funding that we've seen into fintech, we've seen some very valuable companies emerge, at least sort of on, in the private markets. So here what you're seeing is a chart of companies valued at a billion dollars or more in fintech. Um, and the breakdown of where they fall within um, sort of market category. So um, by and large, most of the unicorns in FinTech have fallen in, in that sort of now. Um, insurance is one area where we're seeing uh, some uh, FinTech companies sort of become valued at a billion dollars or more. And we're seeing sort of other areas emerge um, outside of payments and lending in terms of sort of the, the most value, where of the value has accrued among um, most valuable venture-backed companies in fintech. Um, by and large, you know, digital banking has been one of the biggest areas for uh, fintech investment. So if you think about all the different aspects of your personal digital banking um, that, that sort of have been overtaken or sort of where fintech startups are trying to take just a portion of that relationship away from your bank, that's been a, a big focus for, for VCs and as well as startup formation in the space. And so the result of that is, um, you know, these, these areas where we're seeing a, a bunch of sort of startups innovate. Here you see a map we put together, um, sort of the growing crop of fintech startups for millennials. So you see this across savings, across personal investing, wealth management, um, payments, as well as lending, as well as new areas that you're seeing. So, um, you know, a big focus has been sort of what are the UI and data-driven ways that fintech startups can um, attract sort of these newer audiences, and, and it's a big opportunity for startups. Um, and again, here you'll see that borne out in this visualization here. Um, this is an unbundling graphic we did a while ago uh, around all the sort of the startups that are taking away sort of individual small pieces of a bank relationship. You know, interestingly, a lot of these companies are now also partnering with um, financial services incumbents. But interesting here, you just see sort of that breakdown um, visually. And that's not just sort of in the US, but also internationally here, you see that happening in Europe as well, um, where you see sort of that mix of startups across savings, banking, uh, wealth management, lending, also in Europe as well. Just a last look here before we head into the blockchain trends. Um, early stage investing has been continuing to increase into fintech. We're, here we're talking seed and series A deals into fintech. Um, although we are still to see it sort of peter out, um, so we'll, it'll be interesting to monitor, you know, where is the, sort of the early stage activity um, going to happen within fintech as we head into 2016? We'll, we'll take a quick look at uh, some of the blockchain uh, startups that are receiving early stage funding a little later. Great. So with that, let's let's jump into Bitcoin and blockchain. Um, yeah, as part of this data, you know, we we worked with uh, our friends at Capital One to present a lot of this uh, earlier, but we're going to go through it a little bit more in depth today in the webinar. 
Um, so, you know, one of the trends that's emerged, at least in terms of investor interest and general sentiment, um, has been this sort of divergence of Bitcoin as in a leading digital currency and blockchain as in terms of the distributed ledger. So I think what, what thing we're seeing, in, 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 you know, this is going both, both ways. We're seeing a lot of different um, investors and, and pundits weigh in. Um, for example, we saw Digital Currency Group, which is a big sort of investor in the blockchain universe. Uh, they got a little flack for saying that you know Bitcoin startups should, should pivot. Uh, they at least change their name to blockchain. We see Fred Wilson from Union Square Ventures weigh in here that you, you can't have blockchain without the Bitcoin, et cetera, et cetera. But um, this divergence, at least in terms of investor sentiment, is interesting, and, and it's sort of borne out in the data um, that we see here. So here we you see sort of the the funding numbers to Bitcoin and blockchain over time. So between 2009 and 2013 saw under $100 million of funding into blockchain and Bitcoin startups. You know, fast forward and, and look at the 2014, 2015, and sort of the first few months of 2016, um, you can actually put a nine in front of that. So over sort of a billion dollars invested into blockchain startups um, since 2009, and 60% of which of all that funding has come since the start of 2015. Um, when we look at the quarterly trend, though, you know, it's, it's not exactly optimistic. You know, we've seen sort of um, the funding high happened sort of in Q1-15 in terms of when um, the most funding to Bitcoin blockchain startups happened. And since then, we've seen sort of a declining amount of funding. Um, you also see sort of deals drop uh, from sort of that Q4-14 high um, when we saw sort of a lot of the, the wallets, uh, a lot of the mining companies uh, of earlier sort of raise, raise early stage funding. And since then, we've seen this sort of evolving of the ecosystem where um, the, the deals have, have really sort of fallen off. Um, when we look at sort of the breakdown by stage, we see that uh, 2015 did see sort of a notable decrease in Series A funding, uh, Series A deal activity to blockchain and Bitcoin startups. So 23, uh, um, 23 startups raised Series A in, in 2014, and we saw that drop in 2015. We, you know, some of the companies who were sort of seeded in the earlier years um, start to head towards sort of like Series C funding and beyond. Thinking of companies like Coinbase there who are now um, sort of emerging sort of as leading in their category. Um, and, and we're seeing that sort of bearing out. So we're seeing this maturity spectrum evolve, but again, we're also seeing, you know, that the crucial sort of Series A funding hasn't been as kind of blockchain and Bitcoin startups, at least in 2015. Um, and, you know, that's because sort of the ecosystem has evolved, right? So Series A deals have shifted away from a lot of the wallets, the mining companies, and the exchanges that we saw earlier into sort of, you know, broader applications infrastructure for, for blockchain as it pertains to financial services and, and banks, um, as well as sort of issuance, um, compliance, and in other areas. So here you see, you see a breakdown of what, what, where are Series A investments happening in blockchain uh, versus Bitcoin since 2015, and you see um, sort of that, that large majority going to these broader sort of blockchain applications, companies like Filament, Digital Asset Holdings, Gem, Symbion, and others. Um, here you see sort of uh, the most well-funded companies in the blockchain and Bitcoin ecosystem. So 21 Inc., which uh, released the 21 Bitcoin computer uh, earlier, Coinbase, which we mentioned, Blockstream, Circle, and Chain. So here you sort of see, when we look at sort of the most well-funded companies, um, these sort of enterprise uh, blockchain companies uh, are emerging as sort of the most well, more well-funded companies. So we see Chain and Blockstream there, Blockstream of which just raised a large round earlier this year. Um, so will this sort of um, most highly capitalized companies change where we're seeing more of those companies versus the earlier sort of Bitcoin companies? Um, and that's something we'll be watching out for. Um, here is sort of a, a map of, of the business social graph we put together of some of the big brand name investors. So if you think of uh, the investors like Union Square Ventures, Andrews and Horowitz, Sokoi Capital, um, where are they investing within the blockchain and Bitcoin universe? So we map this out. And this is sort of just a look more recently at where they've been investing. And, and here you sort of see that same sort of evolution of where those deals are going, right? So the, the broader sort of blockchain applications, uh, the sort of broader blockchain applications, companies like Abra in the, in the Ramin space, Chain, which was trying to work in the capital markets, um, Open Bazaar, so the P2P uh, decentralized marketplace, Mirror, Kolu, which we'll, we'll dive into a little later. Um, so see, here are some of the bets you see by big name investors. So less so, you know, the companies um, in the wallet space and seeing these ev this evolution of, uh, of deal flow um, into blockchain startups. So, you know, another part of the sort of evolving landscape when we talk about the investment uh, landscape for Bitcoin and blockchain startups is the sort of rising role of corporates. So when we look at sort of where tech giants 
clients and financial services place, players are placing their bets. We're seeing a lot of sort of displacement of uh, traditional venture capital and sort of this influx of corporate um, money sort of buoy what, what's happening in the Bitcoin and blockchain space. So here you see a chart of sort of the corporate investment trend into blockchain and Bitcoin startups over time. This is just looking at um, unique company investments, so just the, the single number of companies. Um, and you see that sort of spike in 2015 where we saw you know, a lot of strategic and corporates flood into the blockchain space. So sort of this realization almost um, of where they can apply, uh, where these startups can, can fit strategically. And that, that really happened in the last year in terms of uh, materially investing into these companies. Um, here you see an earlier sort of map of, of those strategic investors in the blockchain and Bitcoin universe. Um, this was actually back from May 2015 when we first put this together, and you saw fewer than 20 strategics and corporates invested in blockchain and Bitcoin. Um, you know, some notable names there, both in tech and, and in financial services, Goldman Sachs and invested in Circle by then. We saw Google Ventures um, in a few deals, as well as names like Qualcomm, Cisco, Rakuten, and others. Um, but fast forward to um, earlier this year in February, and you just see how much that's changed, right? So this is... Um, sort of the broader map now of what's happened and, and you see the expansion into um, newer verticals where you see corporates in payments, Visa, MasterCard, IMX, all with that's in blockchain now. Um, telecom, you see Orange and Verizon investing, as well as insurance where we see uh, firms like AXA, New York Life, Transamerica, uh, and others uh, sort of invest strategically in this space. And, and what's interesting is that um, and also R3CV, the, uh, the big blockchain partnership between a number of banks who are looking to, to create sort of where, where um, they can find sort of use cases that fit. So we're seeing um, companies who themselves who, who, who uh, has their own in, uh, sort of portfolio investment. So the strategic they are able to sort of get a bird's eye view of, of where the landscape is happening through there. And then you're also seeing it um, in terms of companies who are directly trying to create offerings like Blockstream, uh, which took a big round from AXA earlier this year, uh, creating their own sort of sidechain offering and where else they can um, provide sort of these enterprise blockchain innovations. Um, so here you see, you just see that map. And, and when we look at sort of the, the financial services companies specifically, um, a lot more making their first investment over time. So we, we should probably update this through 2016, but here you see sort of just through the year end and that, that influx of companies across sort of payments, banking, insurance, and others uh, make their first investment or foray into the blockchain and startup landscape. Um, and so the net result of this is, is as I mentioned, sort of that booing of, of the fintech, um, of the blockchain investment landscape by corporate. So here, a chart of sort of the biggest deals um, in the blockchain and Bitcoin space over time. So if you look at those top five largest deals by year and how much, uh, how much of them involve the corporate uh, venture strategic investor, 2013, 2014, fewer dollars and also no corporates involved. 2015, a lot more dollars and, and uh, corporates were involved in every one of those rounds. 2016, sort of bearing out the same way where we see most of the investments, uh, at least sort of the largest ones thus far, involve a corporate um, and that's sort of a trend that we're seeing or continue monitoring is, is how much of an impact will corporates have at least on sort of this investment landscape and what are the implications of that. Um, so next we'll just take a quick uh, case study look at Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan, just sort of a broad view both of, of fintech and, and then also where they've um, invested and, and sort of partnered strategically within blockchain. So if you think about sort of Jamie Dimon and, and his earlier comments into, um, into the space, you know, he, he sort of was... Uh, in his earlier letter, said that Silicon Valley was coming. You know, these fintech startups. We need to be aware of them. And then he also mentioned a bit about blockchain and Bitcoin. So he's been very vocal about uh, dismissing Bitcoin as a currency, but also sort of making some some leeway for 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 broader applications for blockchain um, and where they can fit in, especially strategically for what J.P. Morgan is trying to do. Um, so you see the quotes there. I won't read them, but you can see them there on the left. Um, and when we look at sort of where J.P. Morgan is is reacted specifically. So if you use, if you think about this idea of um, resource allocation as your strategy, as, as sort of the, the acquisitions you make, the investments you make, the partnerships you make, as sort of the strategic areas where they're focusing on, you see here um, JP Morgan's made for us into a number of sort of the emerging themes in fintech over time, payments, lending, personal finance, management, and then now um, despite his earlier comments on Bitcoin, you see them sort of jump into blockchain as well. So digital asset holdings, the, the company 
um, sort of founded by earlier uh, JP Morgan Managing Director Blythe Masters, sort of an investment of theirs. They're participating actively in the R3 CEB partnership. Um, and here you see some of those headlines bear out. Um, and JP Morgan sort of now taking almost a lead role in, um, in, in sort of you know, how blockchain can, can better um, integrate into financial services incumbents. Um, a big sort of change from, from, their, from their prior stance earlier. Um, and you sort of see here the timeline of, of how the events have unfolded um, between the, the comments they've made as well as their strategic partnerships and, and the latest being that JP Morgan's you know, quietly testing blockchain um, with a lot of their clients there. Um, and then <laughs> contrast that to, to their 2014 comments. So when we look at sort of some of these notable FinTech bets here, here they are, and I'm gonna go through those. When we look at Goldman Sachs, um, you know, this is a paper they put out in December 2015. What if I told you the blockchain could disrupt everything? Um, so it was interesting to see this paper um, by them earlier, a very entertaining read that they put out. Um, and, and when we look at sort of their focus area, this is the same map, uh, but just for sort of Goldman's investments. Um, as we mentioned, Goldman's been sort of more active in terms of investing in FinTech upstarts, uh, especially in sort of the big data, uh, data analytics space where we see investments in companies like Context Relevant, Kenshu, um, and others. Um, and Goldman sort of made sort of the, the, the headlines when they invested in Circle, um, which interestingly has actually sort of distanced themselves a little bit from being uh, deemed a sort of a Bitcoin company, but, but that was a notable investment for, for Goldman Sachs into that sort of payments company Circle um, as sort of that first, uh, sort of first uh, move by them into the, into the Bitcoin blockchain space. And since then also sort of following uh, JP Morgan or, or sort of working with, with them and other banks in r 3 CV as well as an investment in digital asset holdings. So, you know, Goldman Sachs has also been in this space and you see that borne out here in their, um, their blockchain moves over time. Um, so you see some of the comments and, and uh, as well as the moves they've made over time and you can see this sort of evolution. So, you know, we'll, we'll be getting you this deck over right after the webinar, so I don't want to go through too much of it, but, um, you know, when we think about sort of where blockchain startups are innovating or at least where the startup formation and early stage deals are happening now, you know, how is this landscape changing and what's, what's, what are startups sort of looking towards as new opportunities? Um, you know, these chain is one example. Um, we've seen a lot of companies sort of make pivots into the capital markets. Um, so can you sort of disrupt the clearing networks here? Um, clearly there's a lot of capital, you know, chain raised a big round from, from a lot of strategic investors and others, but you know, how fast can these companies move? And, and also um, will the banks be able to move in fast enough with them and how will sort of this how will CEO, CIOs at different firms sort of um, converge or um, work together, especially as, um, as, these, as these companies sort of work together uh, strategically. When we think about sort of money transfer and disrupting uh, Western Union, you know, another area where we're seeing a lot, a lot of blockchain startups uh, be formed, Abra is just one such company there and, and sort of in the remittances market. Um, you know, can, will companies be able to make a dent here quicker in 2016 is definitely a big question. Um, and something we will be watching for. Uh, when we think about smart contracts, obviously this is sort of one of the big promise areas for blockchain. Um, for those who are unaware, you know, sp smart contracts being sort of the uh, small bits of code that are attached to an asset and determining where um, and how sort of an underlying asset will perform based on, um, based on these network events. So, you know, a lot more startups are entering here. We, there was actually another one that just raised funding uh, this week, RSK Labs in the smart contract space raised a million dollars. Um, so another area where we're seeing a lot of startup formation. Um, and then compliance, uh, chain analysis is, is one company um, where sort of they, they're partnering, um, they signed a memorandum at least with uh, the cybercrime unit in Europe and, and they're tracking sort of the digital identities connected to um, activity on the blockchain and, and um, sort of detecting suspicious activity in real time. Elliptic is another company I would mention here uh, based in London in, in sort of the compliance space that just raised $5 million as well. Uh, from Santander and others. Um, insurance is a, definitely another area where we're seeing some interesting applications emerge, um, specifically in sort of the claims verification. So Verisart um, and Everledger, two startups that are interesting. So Everledger, I mentioned, um, just joined sort of Allianz's uh, accelerator earlier, um, but providing sort of fraud detection uh, system for diamonds, um, you know, certainly very aware sort of insurance fraud and you think about some of the applications with art and, and, and diamonds um, could be interesting and, and also now we're also seeing this emerge um, for also other other areas so safe share insurance is one company which um, formed by a few former um, former 
uh, employees at Lloyd's um, and, and also trying to create sort of a new um, a new insurance type for sort of sharing economy and they're also integrating blockchain solutions into their um, into their product and, and sort of announced that earlier this month um, and then lastly specialized API so Kolu one company is partnered with Deloitte and sort of um, introduced uh, this way to, to sort of manage and, and also keep track of the digital assets on top of blockchain Factum, one company that's been doing a lot of sort of partnerships, um, especially in China where they're providing sort of a back office blockchain um, notarization services on the blockchain. Um, so there's just a few areas that we're seeing sort of the earlier companies and those that are still you know, raising early stage funding emerge. And obviously this is all changing very fast. You, you may have seen sort of the profile of Ethereum in the New York Times this morning, um, another sort of exciting area where we're seeing um, at least a lot of the developers become excited about and, and so the, the landscape will change and continue to change but um, with this webinar I'll hopefully sort of give you just an overview of some of the investment trends and startup formation trends that we're seeing in this space um, so with that I think we'll move to questions uh, Victor from the team has been gathering uh, a few of them and, and I'm seeing them here um, just again we'll be distributing this webinar at the end and you hear some of this the company profiles that we'll, we'll link to um, and we'll be getting this to you guys. Um, so I'm just going to look through some of the questions here. I think we have time for a couple. Um, so what do we expect from M&A? You know, I think, I think certainly when we think about sort of the blockchain space, um, we have, if you think about sort of the, those quadrants of areas, um, you know, we've seen the partnerships um, between blockchain startups and, and incumbents. We've seen the investments by the corporate venture arms. And we've also seen um, sort of the, the creation of um, innovation labs as well as incubators and accelerators by fintech. I haven't really seen that sort of marquee sort of M&A move. Um, I would anticipate that we will see some, some M&A uh, strategically uh, this year or, or next uh, into the sort of blockchain and Bitcoin space by financial service incumbents. Um, if you think about sort of what's happening in fintech overall, we've seen um, players like Capital One, uh, Intuit, Goldman Sachs, make sort of early stage uh, acquisitions of early stage fintech companies across other areas and I would expect you know as they as as sort of the experiments continue among um, among sort of financial services incumbents in blockchain that there may be some strategic alignment to acquire um, some companies so you know I mean I, I don't have a crystal ball there but I, I would anticipate that we, we will uh, be, be keeping an eye on, on whether there'll be some some sort of um, M&A moves especially in some of these enterprise blockchain companies at the early stage um, Looking for another question here. Um, what are? Oh, let me see here. Um, you know, what are sort of the exciting non-standard uses of blockchain on your radar? Um, you know, personally, you know, having monitored what's going on in sort of the insurance tech space, I, I'm excited for for one application there, um, as it pertains to sort of peer-to-peer -peer insurance startups. So, um, a big sort of element of, of what's happening in sort of the insurance tech landscape today is this emergence of um, companies who are trying to create uh, a new sort of peer-to-peer -peer framework around uh, more transparency, um, sort of more alignment between users. And as part of that, you know, blockchain may emerge as an area to, to, um, to create sort of a, a better way to keep track of payments into these startups as well as outflows out of them. So I, I'd, I'd expect that there may be some interesting aspects over there. One company that I mentioned earlier, get I think Ethic is one company that, that's interesting there um, in the insurance space who are, looks like they'll be implementing blockchain. Um, let me see if we have any others. Um, will we expect sort of the corporate activity in terms of investments um, continue to sort of buoy uh, the, the blockchain space? I think so. I mean, I think it's definitely bearing out. Uh, I'm sorry, I'll parallel that with another question we got is what, what have we seen in Q1 so far? I um, definitely haven't seen an influx of capital into the blockchain space in Q1, so we'd anticipate sort of that, um, that trend to either, you know, we, we don't anticipate a big sort of up spike in blockchain investments in Q1. Um, and again, where we're, we're, we are seeing a lot of uh, those companies raise money is, is in the sort of strategic investment. I mentioned Santander's in investment in Elliptic earlier, and then also sort of blockchain specific or Bitcoin specific funds who are um, sort of investing a lot at sort of the very early stage. Um, so I anticipate that to continue to be the trend. I, I don't, you know, venture investors, as we saw earlier, haven't really um, propped up sort of space recently, and we've seen sort of a pulling away uh, by some of the bigger name investors, um, or at least sort of staying quiet for now. 
Um, and again, you know, I'd mentioned that you know blockchain as a, and Bitcoin as a space raised just you know, just over a billion dollars in capital since 2009. When we think about fintech in just 2015, is you know over 14 million invested. So very small portion of fintech overall. Um, and we got another sort of financial services companies prepare itself for disruption brought about blockchain. You know, I mean, I think a lot of it is just sort of adapting that mindset um, and really sort of investing um, materially in in creating this. You know, I think it goes beyond sort of doing sort of just a workshop or a, um, a or just sort of a, maybe a passive uh, partnership where there's no sort of material um, involvement on this. And I think it really involves sort of getting in the weeds and and putting sort of the resources together. So, you know, I, you know we, we have sort of a whole bit on sort of corporate innovation and and, um, and sort of a webinar and, and area that we've done there. So, you know, happy to share that as well. But um, I think it really just comes down to really being sort of materially invested in sort of the partnerships and invested. Um, you know, one thing I will plug just quickly is sort of this FinTech conference we're doing in June uh, where we're going to be hosting uh, Fred Wilson and others about sort of blockchain and, and other areas where corporate should be should be looking at um, so definitely excited for that event. Um, with that, I think we're going to clear out here. Yeah, no, I think there's plenty more questions I see here, so we'll probably answer those uh, by emails and through other channels um, after the webinar. But uh, thanks again for joining. We'll be getting the slides here so you can have sort of the investment numbers um, and all the slides together. So thanks again for joining, everyone, and I uh, hope you have a great rest of the week.